In this video, I'll show you the three different types of toggles that I create using variables and advanced actions in Adobe Captivate. Earlier today, I was working on a client's project and I realized that I was building a number of different toggles, you know, essentially where the learner clicks on something and changes its value and it could change something else on the slide as well. And it occurred to me that there are three different methods that I use depending on the circumstances and the situation. Let me show you those today. So you can see I've created three different buttons on my slide. These are just shapes used as buttons. Let me show you the multi-state objects for each one here. Let's click on state view for this first one. And here we start off with a false and when we press the button, we'll change it to true. And the idea is that if you press it again, it will go back to false. Behind it, of course, I'm using a variable to keep track of that state. In this case, it's underscore toggle underscore zero one. Another item I have, when I have more than two items or three or more items, I'll use this type of button here. And you can see that there are individual states for all these different items. These could be steps or stages uh, or whatever it is that you wish. Also only requires a single variable and I'm going to use underscore toggle underscore two in this case. This requires a different advanced action. The first one's a little simpler, but this one of course requires a sort of a different approach, a different logical approach, which I'll show you as well. The final toggle button starts off in this null or completely unselected state. And when you press it, it will then toggle through item one, two, and three. And instead of reverting back to the null state, it will revert back to item one. So the first time you launch this slide is the only time that you'll see this normal state. And as you press it, it will cycle through one, two, three, and then back to one again. So let's start with the easiest of the three, and that's this simple false true button, if you will. We'll go into our advanced actions window, and I'm simply gonna call this toggle underscore one. This needs to be a conditional advanced action because we're gonna look at the value of the variable associated with this button. This happens to be underscore toggle underscore zero one. I'm going to check to see if it is equal to zero. And that's the default value of that variable that I've assigned it. I've set it up to be zero from the start. So if it's equal to zero, we're going to reassign the value of the very same variable. So I will assign toggle zero one with the literal value of one. Now, if it's already one, what do I want to have happen? Well, in this case, I'm going to reset it back to zero. So I can do that down here in the else section, assign toggle zero one with the literal value of zero. So if I press this button repeatedly, that variable will alternately be assigned a value of one or a value of zero. Press it again, a value of one and a value of zero. But of course, that's not enough. We need to change the appearance of the button to let your learners know that that variable has been reassigned. So we're simply going to change the state of our first toggle button to item two, which is the true statement or the true button state. And if we're resetting it back to zero, we're gonna return it to the false state or in this case, the normal state. So we'll choose change state of first toggle back to normal there. That's it, very simple. We save that as an action, click OK and click close. Okay, now that I've created that advanced action, don't forget to select it as your on success action for toggle one, and there it is. Let's go ahead and preview in HTML5. So you can see I've uh, displayed the values of all my variables here, but let's focus on the first one. So the first button is false, and of course it has a value of zero. If I press it, 
the variable gets updated to one and the button changes its state to true. And I can press this all day long. Of course, you can use this as an answer to a knowledge check, or you could use it as a click to reveal, whatever it is that you wish to use it. So now let's take a look at item one here, or uh, the second toggle in the slide itself here. This works a little bit differently because as we indicated, there's more than just two possible states for this button. There's in fact four states for this button that could be displayed. So we can't just use an if then and else statement. We need to do something a little bit more advanced here. Let's go to advanced actions and we'll call this one toggle underscore two. The first decision tab, I'm going to relabel it from untitled one because I do want to pay attention to labeling. We'll just call this click. This is what happens when we click this button. And we're going to do several things. We're first of all going to increment the value of our variable for toggle two by a value of one. So in other words, if it's presently one, it will become two. If it's presently two, it will become three and so on. While we do this though, we also want to go to the next state in our multi-state object. So I'm going to click on the G key on my keyboard to find go to next state. We'll select our second toggle item and that's good to go. We do need to check if we've reached the end of the states that are available in this button through the use of the variable. So we're going to create another tab and we're going to call this check. And this will be a conditional advanced action where we look at the value of toggle two and see if it's one more than the four items that we have in our multi-state object. So we're going to go to variable and choose toggle two and see if it is equal to the literal value of five. In other words, we've gone beyond the four items that are in our multi-state object. And all we're simply going to do here is we're going to assign it back to a value of one because the go to next state action automatically will cycle through and start over again. We just need to do the same thing with our variable. So now I can save this as an action, click OK and close. Let's make sure we assign it to our button here. So we'll execute advanced actions and make sure we're pointing at toggle two. Let's test this out. Okay, let's press item one. Item one becomes item two, three, four, and here's the real test. No, it doesn't go to five, it goes back to one because we reassigned it in the second tab of that advanced action. Okay, now let's look at this third and final choice and just take a look at the state view. So again, we're gonna display the variable on the screen. The default value for this variable, I've set it to zero because essentially this first state, this normal state is a null state. And once the learner starts pressing this button, they will never see that normal or null state uh, again because of the way we set this up. We're simply gonna to toggle through item one, item two, item three, and then back to one again. Let me show you how that's done. So we're gonna start by clicking project, going to advanced actions, We'll call this one toggle underscore three. And we're going to have a first tab where we click the button. And all that happens is we're going to increment our toggle three variable by a value of one. Okay, remember it's starting at zero. So now it will be worth one. On the second tab, I'm going to label this item one. And this will be a conditional advanced action. And we're going to say if the variable toggle three is equal to the literal value of one, we want to change the state of our third toggle button to item one. Simple, right? Then we want to duplicate this decision, change the label to item two change what we're checking for. In this case, if our variable is equal to the literal value of two, 
we're going to change this to item 2. Let's duplicate it again. Now we'll go with item 3 as the label. We'll check to see if it is worth a value of 3. And if it is, we will display item 3. And last but not least, let's duplicate this again, but we're going to change it up a little bit here. We're going to call this one reset to 1. So if toggle 3 is equal to 4, because again, remember on the first click, we're just incrementing from 1 to 2 to 2 to 3 to 3, potentially to 4. There is no 4 in our multi-state object. So what we want to do is do two things. We're going to change the state of our toggle button to item 1. But we're also going to assign toggle 3 back to the literal value of 1. So it will only cycle through the values of 1, 2, 3, and then back to 1 again. Let's save this as an action. Click OK, and we can close. Make sure you assign your button's action to execute advanced actions, and we'll go to toggle 3. Let's preview this in HTML5 and browser. So again, we're starting with a value of 0 because our button is in sort of a null state, if you will. Let's press it. We're now on item 1, item 2, item 3, and if we press it again, should go back to item one. Perfect. If you happen to be a member of my YouTube channel, at the download level or higher, you'll have an opportunity to download this project file to use however you wish. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.